Hi all, I have another magnificent game to show you today of Leela. So this is in the Chascon Blitz Battle 2018, 5 minutes with a 2 second increment, stage 2. So Leela is playing against Laser here. Let's have a look, the opening book move, the 6 ply or half moves, e4, e5, d4. Danish Gambit fans will love this game. <laughs> this is a Danish Gambit. And I always think of the concept fit for purpose, which I once heard uh, from someone very high up. The term fit for purpose, a lot of these openings are not used by the Super Grandmasters. But the Super Grandmasters are often playing very, very solid chess and trying to maintain their rating, etc. For, for casual players online, a gambit like this is a lot of fun, can generate a lot of entertainment, and surely it's more, in a way, fit for purpose, for, definitely for online blitz at least, even for, you know, over the board games. We're not, most of us are not chess professionals. So this kind of gambit lost favour, though, uh, in the 1920s as defensive lines uh, were discovered. This lost favour in, in terms of the top players at the time. So it was actually popular with the likes of Alexander Alekhine, a former world champion, Frank Marshall, U US champion multiple times, Blackburn, uh, Mises, uh, but yeah, 1920s it started to lose favour. Anyway, let's have a look at this game. So this is the opening book position. Great fun. <laughs> and now Leela chooses knight takes c3. Uh, not gambiting another pawn with, say, bishop c4. That is another gambit. We have bishop c5, bishop c4, d6, knight f3, knight c6. And Leela Castle's not worrying about any potential pin at the moment. Uh, in fact, after knight f6, white pins and black pins. So both are pinning with relative pins, they're called relative pins, not absolute pins, because the knights can legally move, potentially. Rook c1, h6. And in fact, Leela voluntarily gives up the dark square bishop. Uh, knight d5, we have queen going back. And now b4, so this is one of the points to gain a bit of space rapidly with b4. If bishop takes b4, then knight takes, knight takes, queen b3 hits b4, and f7 and this is quite nice actually this position can be a big advantage for white so the bishop drops back h3 bishop takes queen takes black castles and now queen c3 this actually gets out of the way of the f pawn now you might wonder the f pawn currently is pinned but for me this actually at the moment represents one of the key trump cards of the position the lack of any kind of defensive pieces around the king here and white's ability potentially to try and storm the king side with a move like f4 later let's see how this pans out knight e5 the bishop drops back and it remains on an important diagonal where it could be pinning that sensitive f pawn c6 and now this pawn is basically unpinned with knight takes b6 for the moment but it's pinned again by the queen. Rook cd1, rook fd8, and now I'm pinning again this f pawn. So this f pawn's ready to rock, ready to roll with f4. But with queen b6, there's horrible a5, surely putting a lot of pressure on the queen side. f4, knight g6 was played. On a takes b4, queen g3 is a very nice move. And for example, knight g6, queen takes g6, with that pin being celebrated. Uh, so here, yeah, if knight d7, then white plays rook takes d6. So black has to be quite careful here. Uh, so knight g6 is played. And now we have e5. And uh, this is a great precursor to try and get a duo of pawns on e5 and f5 which looks pretty menacing if you consider a queen on g3 we're starting to get a really interesting attacking position with the g pawn pinned the f pawn potentially pinned and also this diagonal could also be useful in the variations we have a takes b4 here d takes e5 looks to be fairly critical defensive try it seems after f takes rook takes there's bishop takes f7 here 
and now rook takes d1 and here it seems as though the strongest move in this line is queen e1 supporting that e pawn and say the knight moves rook d7 this variation seems to have something going for it if that's apparently the best move technically for whatever reason uh to give up the pawn there yeah this this line seems to be favoring white uh, so d takes e5 is interesting and just to, just to examine this again on king h7 that would have been disaster here because a bishop takes g6 check queen c2 check and actually the black king gets mated in this line showing some of the dangers so anyway a takes b4 so black is materialistic of course a couple of pawns up is black laughing all the way to the bank here from this ancient gambit which Leela has been forced to play or is there something going on well at the moment there is a threat queen takes g6 because of that pin pawn so we have d5 seemingly blunting the bishop no worries surely uh on yeah it's 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 uh any any knight move and there might be some other things going on which which are also dangerous so it seems like a safe decision to blunt this bishop we have rook d e1 but now look at this position a lot of players might actually start thinking white's in good shape here despite the two pawn deficit if we look at this and think in terms of philidor again pawn mobility these pawns are not just mobile for creating a pass pawn they're, they're a battering ram for the black king it just needs f f5 f6 all of a sudden we got pressure on g7 but also we've got the possibilities of e6 as well so let's see uh, what happened here. Uh, by the way, if uh, okay, so d5, rook d e1. If f5 here immediately, then this position. Well, it's a little bit similar to the game. So let's just look at the game. Rook d e1. But c5 now happens. You know, Black's keen to try and use these pawns. F5, and now c4 is played. So we're getting a tense position. Is black going to capitalize on the extra pawns in time? Or is there going to be trouble on the king side? On knight f8, e6 is dangerous. For example, this position is showing the e pawn crashing through. This is the most crushing move here, queen d1. So if c4, there's things like bishop takes c4. If here, then taking and taking on d5 with a big advantage. So uh c4 was was played but now Lila actually plays e6 fascinating e6 what's going on here knight h8 was played you might wonder why on knight f8 then f6 and there's a threat of checkmate here g6 bishop c2 this position is very enjoyable for white indeed uh, on c takes you might be wondering then e takes this position with rook e6 interferes with the queen protecting g6 and if black has to sack the queen there's a very very sharp variation here where the black pawns are not quite enough they get scooped up for white's pawns but white ends up better so fascinating stuff so we end up with this peculiar looking knight h8 move <laughs> by elimination f6 g6 this isn't necessarily a picture of happiness because as we know knights when they're in the corner they've only got two squares of 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 activity so usually you don't want your knights in the corner basically uh so bishop c2 is played we have king h7 on rook takes a2 e takes king h7 there's actually f8 queening here for example here rook e7 check and this is absolutely you know mating rook g7 checkmate or if rook f7 just to show the dangers yeah just taking and then mating like that so there's all h7 uh, so beautiful stuff here already for this king h7 we have now e takes f7 so again with a big threat of f8 queening and rook e7 check so black puts a stop to that pawn uh, just to put that on the board though just for entertainment b3 we just queen and just show that line again bang bishop takes g6 here actually strong and this is checkmating 
so uh, rook f8 we have rook e7 and now this is really fascinating you might think well why not take on a2 <laughs> there's a wonderful move black played d4 uh, the curious thing about this position with b3 for example or, or rook takes a2 if we look at this for a moment if the rook is ever moved it actually creates a gigantic weakness of the last move this move is not covering the rank the rooks are not protecting each other and guess what white has in this position as a tactical test for you if I give you five seconds to pause the video <laughs> okay Queen b8 doesn't matter what black does this is, this is bad if rook takes b8 then f8 is queening with check and then mating and you might think well can, can the queen be, get evicted guess what like tactic we play here in this position okay bang queen takes a8 yeah and then the same thing okay so beautiful tactics behind the scenes showing that actually this queen is not just pointing at g6 but also at b8 here remarkably the mathematics and beauty of this game are quite strong in this position uh, so d4 is played and we have bishop e4 and again you know any possibilities of taking as queen b8 yeah so the rook can't really touch the a pawn uh, we have queen a5 and now h4 this little pawn is subject to attention the bishop's got a view on that pawn and there's potential for h5 if it wasn't for queen takes but that can be resolved with a move like rook e5 building that bridge for h5 so we have queen a3 here on queen h5 immediately just rook e5 will evict the queen where's the queen going and if queen e2 there's things like bishop takes g6 check and rook takes e2 if we look we're covering uh I believe we're covering queen e2 where bishop takes g6 uh, at the very least so anyway that wasn't that wasn't tried we have queen a3 looking at, at yeah black's groveling here it seems with moves like queen a3 uh, we have rook f3 queen c1 check king h2 and now h5 trying to get the queen back to the king so uh okay is this enough defensively guess what Leela plays in this position if I give you five seconds here this is just joy for me on the chessboard this sort of game by the way absolute joy it can't be faked I love this game <laughs> especially from a Danish gamut yeah. so whites play here five seconds okay exploiting the pin rook f5 with the idea now of rook takes h5 check now if g takes there's also the technical matter of queen g7 checkmate if b3 just to put it on on the board for fun yeah rook takes pulls the queen back and then we just scoop up with checkmate coming with queen h5 checkmate so rook f5 we have queen h6 but now rook g5 and black's in a kind of zugzwang you know queen, rook takes then queen b8 <laughs> oh dear so here uh instagram this position yeah hash king's crusher hash chess hash engine chess yeah use a lot of hashtags this is instagrammable position by the way i'm taking some some i got a video of kaylee if you want to check out my instagram accounts king's crusher uh recently uh, so anyway uh, b6 was played out of pure desperation uh, if rook takes f7 then rook takes knight takes rook takes g6 is crashing through absolutely crashing through uh, let's see if rook a3 then we're back to queen b8 as a fantastic resource and here uh, rook e8 just plowing that Eight rank for example here then queening is good or uh, what what else in this position after rookie eight if rook takes g5 then just taking here 
and there's nothing really for black to do apart from get mated so uh b6 black's shedding the material now rook just drops yeah it's over the rook can't take because of the f8 of course carnage carnage but let's show that for fun anyway rook takes a8 f8 queening with check check and then checkmate so uh c3 was played bishop drops back c2 yeah shedding material shedding the material shedding the material that pawn is taken with the rook and here again yeah black's got nothing much to do apart from just be checkmated now and we're coming for the checkmate pretty soon checkmate so a fantastically enjoyable game at least from I, I love this kind of game from a gambit because we're kind of seeing that maybe you know the old gamuts I think they're fit for purpose for online blitz I think the old gambits like the Danish gamut why not give it a try in in your online stuff or even you overboard it's it makes for fun games and it shows that even against what what would usually think is a super solid you know engine can't refute the gambit it seems white is getting some significant attacking pressure on the king side and despite the extra material there's mathematical properties of the attacking queen here looking at b8 which which really safeguarded in a way the imminent sort of you know past pawn threats uh so anyway if you enjoyed this game as much as me click the left box which top left which should appear shortly to become a member at chasmold.net and that will have my reference code you can play against other youtubers you can also check this analysis and other games that i've analyzed recently on the improved menu learn from the masters okay comments questions like shares subscribes with the notification bell really appreciate it okay thanks very much